If you're a mom who thinks she has the next million dollar idea, then you're gonna want to pay close attention. My next guest turned her passion for baking with her children into a lucrative business. You may know her as Buffy the Vampire Slayer, but now she's killing it in the kitchen. Please welcome Sarah Michelle Geller. <laughs> Well, I sound worse than I actually oh. am. You're getting over something. I have been getting over, I have children, is yeah, what I have. Exactly. I have. You're never I, quite yes. over anything I have yet. children in preschool, that's what I have. <laughs> exactly. Yes. We were talking about what a successful career you have had in the business. Buffy, huge hit on TV. Everybody still <laughs> remembers it, loves it. Your movie, Cruel Intentions, won you a Teen Choice and an MTV Movie Award. Then you suddenly have this idea to start an online baking business. Well, it totally is the logical next yeah, exactly. step, right? Well, I mean, it just seems <laughs> obvious, right? So how did you come up with it and what exactly is it? So Foodsters right now, it's a lifestyle brand that is here to provide creative and memorable experiences in the kitchen. And I saw this hole in the marketplace and I didn't grow up cooking. I mean, I grew up in New York. I made reservations and then <laughs> I, right? And then I married my husband who went to culinary school. And so I thought I hit the jackpot. Like I was proud of that I didn't cook. And sure. then I noticed my husband having these moments in the kitchen when our first child was born. And I knew all the statistics, fine and gross motor skills, math, science, vocabulary, lowers you know, the rates of diabetes, depression, and more importantly, fosters creativity and invention and ingenuity. And I started to get in there and I was having these great moments. And I kept saying, you know, how do I share this with other people? But what I also learned, it was you know, the rise of Pinterest and everyone was pinning all these like great ideas. And I noticed this gap between inspiration and execution, which is how do you make it look like that and also make it taste great and be better for you. And when I was in the baking aisles, I noticed that in every other aisle of the supermarket, everything is dye-free, preservative-free, non it's all better ingredients. And then you go in the baking aisle, and everything has these ingredients with, first of all, way too many consonants, right? right. Words I don't recognize. <laughs> you know, baking, first ingredient, I don't know about you guys, flour, sugar, like these were words I didn't, these were words I didn't recognize. And right. I said, wait a second, why are we accepting of this? Why is there not a convenient, easier way? And then I started doing the research and I found, you know, you can dye things with, you know, dye free and you can use non-GMO sprinkle. Like all this stuff exists, but it's hard to track down. So we have the idea to put it in a convenient box that gets delivered straight to you. And you can either just use our signature mixes and be creative on your own, or we have these boxes that help with the craft element of it. And I think really, takes it from an experience, takes food to an experience level. Right, a, a family experience and, for sure, yeah. You know, you have children. It's like, we live in a very, I say, connected society. But I worry that ultimately with all this connection, we're becoming so disconnected. Mm -hmm. We, right? Yeah. I mean, we don't, yes. it's about eye to eye conversation and contact. And the kitchen is the one place. Once, that's the one place to do it, yeah. Put the phone down and you talk. And what I want to give people is experience. I want to give them those moments. I say I'm giving you time in a box. I've done, we've done all the legwork with these boxes for you to open them up with your family, with your girlfriends, whoever it is, and bake something from the heart. So, so what do you say to people who would go, well, well of course you're going to be successful because you are already successful, you know, you've led somewhat of a charmed life, but in fact, you've had barriers put in front of you for this too. Oh, when we went out to start raising money for this idea, you know, sure, Buffy gets in the door, but who wants to take Buffy baking very seriously? Seriously, you know, <laughs> so I think a lot of it was a novelty like, OK, let's hear this out and let's meet her. And only then when they realized and by the way, not everybody realized, but there's the one or two people that went, wait, she is onto something. There is a hole in the marketplace. Why is it either these really junky mixes or the other end of the spectrum, which is like super, super healthy, probably extremely expensive and probably doesn't taste very yeah. good. You know, what about people? who want to bake something, a treat, have that portion controlled, taste better, but still have better ingredients. Exactly, and besides your, your baking, uh, with this com company that you've started and it's doing so well, you've also teamed up with Swiffer for yeah. their campaign. It's the Say Yes to the Mess. Say <laughs> Yes to the Mess. It's like the story of my life. Um, so yeah, so I get this phone call and someone said, um, are you familiar with Swiffer? And I was like, wait, is that a joke? Like, yeah, I'm a mom. Like, I, I, I know Swiffer really well. It's aisle three in case anyone was wondering <laughs> at my supermarket. And they really want to encourage families. They did this study on families and they were asking, you know, how do you think it's important for kids to be creative and make messes? And seven, it was 95% uh, of the people said, yes, we know it's important. And 75% of them said, but we don't let them do it because we don't like the mess. Yeah, yeah. And I do understand that. But Swiffer is trying to encourage families, say yes to the creativity, say yes to the learning, to the discovery, to that process. And then with Swiffer Wedget, you clean it up. It's a thorough cleaning. You're done. It's not a big deal. 
And so often you see families and it's like, you're so worried about the mess that while they're having the experience, like you're sitting there cleaning, you're missing that moment, that connection. Well, your husband has a little of that, Freddie Prince Jr., right? A little of that OCD about cleaning, so this is probably good. Well, just the other day, I don't know if you saw on my Instagram, but just the other day, I came downstairs and my uh, son, my three-year-old, had decided to get creative and marker our entire kitchen, all the cabinets, all the dishwasher, and, and, and at first, you know, I had that mom moment of like, oh my God, we have white cabinets. <laughs> but then I looked at the drawing and it was really interesting. He was definitively working something out. Like he wasn't scribbling to make a mess. It was a very distinct picture in each part. It was like balanced for a three-year-old. And you know, yes, I explained to him that this is not where we color and it came off, it's washable, not a big deal. But at the same time, so I said, you know what? Let's get some paper out. Do you want to draw? Like, let's figure that out and put it out. And again, we want to really encourage parents. Get in the mess with them. That's where you never know which, forget us having the next great idea, they may have the next great invention. And messes and all of that and creativity, that's that road to invention. I'm all for a mess.